Hello, four-year journey followers. This is Bob Lucas on Thursday, the 12th of March. Hope you're doing well. Another installment of the series here talking about Bitcoin, the four-year journey, the four-year cycle, and what I see currently unfolding. Now, clearly, we have a significant event unfolding here, a massive worldwide liquidity event across all asset classes, across all markets, we are seeing pretty much, I wouldn't call it unprecedented type of action, but certainly top five for the past 100 years in terms of the types of events we're seeing unfold across all as asset classes. And Bitcoin is no exception uh, to this. There is no, no real such thing as a safe haven or a risk off or a hedge type asset in a liquidity event. And that's what we're seeing right now. Currently seeing a run to cash, uh, a run to U.S. Treasuries, for example. Not even gold is immune at the, mo immune at the moment to this sell-off. And again, Bitcoin is no exception. In past videos, I had been asked the question, what happens to Bitcoin in a recession? And I had said in those videos that in a liquidity event, so the initial shock of a ty recessionary type event or a black swan event, call it what you want, that Bitcoin would get sold off indiscriminately just like every other asset would. And when there's a run for cash, when there's a, a need to fulfill margin, uh, Bitcoin is just another asset class and it will get sold off. And we're seeing exactly that unfold right here where we see this massive decline here, taking out the December lows, which personally, as I've said in previous videos, I thought would hold based on the way Bitcoin has traded in prior cycles, whether it's a one-year cycle or four-year cycle. I had assumed that this six to seven month, 55% decline marked the end of the reversion back to sort of a mean coming out of the four-year cycle low. And so certainly by how this traded here more recently, that was my expectation. Now, that's clearly wrong. We have now taken out those December lows on what is, again, a liquidity event. In such events, you can pretty much throw out your technical analysis and classical charting uh, ability. The, the market really does not care about any sort of line, trend line, moving average, whatever you want, it's not going to respect anything like that. People are not geared or positioned or trading off some of these pivots or some of these levels. Essentially, it's indiscriminate selling, leverage selling at this point as well. And, um, you know, obviously you're seeing the impact right here in Bitcoin's price. You also need to consider that Bitcoin is only a 110 billion dollar network or market cap um, maybe as of last week or the week before it was a 130 or 150 billion dollar market cap but uh, when you consider the leverage markets that are out there and when you consider what 150 billion dollars means from a global standpoint or global sense it really is just a drop in the ocean so in a liquidity event like we're seeing right now, an asset class like Bitcoin is going to get thrown around um, like any object would, say, in your vehicle during a crash. It's just going to get you know, bumped around and thrown around. And again, we're seeing that. And also when you consider that uh, out of that 110 billion in market cap, if, if half of the coins are not traded and not moving, they're in cold wallets, they're in, in storage, or they're lost coins, then you're only talking about sort of a 50 billion or 60 billion in liquid BTC that is uh, potentially moving. So uh, the market is so small. I mean, the, the overnight uh, Fed uh, uh, repo actions are 150 billion a piece uh, the last few nights. So the entire market cap of Bitcoin is uh, is being sort of traded in, in, in different asset classes. So it, 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 again, in, in these types of environments, it's basically uh, hunker down and uh, let's see what comes out on the other end. The other question I've been getting a lot of is, did I sell? Am I selling? What am I doing with my Bitcoin? And the answer is simply, I'm not selling a single coin at this point. I didn't get in to Bitcoin 
um, to get shaken out by a move like this, certainly not after a 40% decline. Didn't get shaken out, didn't come close to thinking of getting out after a 55% decline over seven months. Certainly not going to get shaken out of position right here. The reason for me, the reason for getting in early on a four year cycle here is precisely to have a strong hand in a market in the belief that this for me is an investment and not a trade. I trade all the time Bitcoin on the shorter time frames with the goal of increasing my Bitcoin, but from a hodl and from a four year journey standpoint, this is an investment. It's an investment I believe in, and for that reason, I'm, I'm holding onto my Bitcoin because I believe 110 billion in market cap does not represent the true value of Bitcoin and to where I believe Bitcoin is going in the future. I've also said in numerous videos, perhaps maybe in every single video, that nobody ultimately knows where price is heading for Bitcoin or for any asset class. If it was that easy and if we knew in if, uh, definitive terms, in absolute terms, then it wouldn't be a question. We would just know. Um, but we don't know. We don't have a crystal ball and we plan for these events and we plan for these events by having the right mind for mindset and the right allocation. It's the reason why I've stressed from the very beginning that I don't want to have more than a 10% of my sort of trading uh, or investing portfolio allocated to something like Bitcoin because it is an extremely volatile asset. It's a new technology. It is still yet to be fully tested and we just don't know what the possibility is. I said going into this that Bitcoin is a type of asset that eventually could go to zero. Well, if not zero, to a, uh, a much lower price, even perhaps as low as or below the prior four year cycle. That's always been a possibility, not an expectation, but a possibility. And for that reason, a allocation needed to be sensibly sized and um, positioned for that potential. The other reason for having a reasonable allocation was that the potential, the upside that we were talking about based on its history, based on where it's gone, where it's come from, where it's gone, and extrapolating that out further from a market cap standpoint, but also purely from a, a classical or a trending standpoint, the possibility is there, and I continue to believe it is 100% there, up to that $100,000 level and above. The question is timing, and the question is being patient. Unfortunately, too many people who have bought into Bitcoin see only the one side of that equation. They see only the upside potential and they are motivated by greed and not through logical thinking. Just like any other investment or allocation of capital that I put to work, for me, it's an investment and investments and every investment comes with risk. Every investment comes with possibility and potential and it's with that in mind that I allocate my capital. For me, there really is no place for feelings and emotion when it comes to an investment. When an investment becomes too emotional for you, it means that you have invested far too much or you've risked far too much or your expectations are really not grounded in the sense that you understand and appreciate the risks and you understand the potential. All you're pretty much looking at is the potential and what that potential might mean to you from in terms of a life-changing event and you become blinded to that, uh, to that outcome or that possible outcome to the point where it all becomes extremely emotional or stressful for you. So when we encounter moments like this as we're seeing here or for example, this move here, um, you pretty much don't know how to handle a situation like that because, again, you're emotionally too invested. So I'm just going to warn you here, when you approach an investment from a position of greed, you end up basically with a position that only allows for one direction or one outcome. And I feel that many of you, not necessarily followers um, who have been uh, on board from this from the beginning, but many folks who get into this type of space lack the investment discipline and don't appreciate that an investment has risk 
And as a result, they find themselves today in a situation where they will be unwinding or have already unwinded their position for yet another loss, even though Bitcoin from the four-year cycle low is still up 80%. Now, it's up 80% in just 65 weeks, so a little over a year, 15 months, the asset is up 80%. So just going to put this in perspective again, because this is how I view my investments. Up 80% from the bottom, of course, nobody catches the absolute bottom, but even from the first video, up around 60 or 65%. When you look at the stock market down, you know, 25, 27% here in the US and around the world, something similar. You look at crude oil down 37%, you look at uh, silver down 20%, uh, you look at the 10-year yield or treasuries up uh, considerably. Then you start to begin to realize that uh, you know Bitcoin hasn't done this so so poorly, right? It's all about the discipline that we talked about. But unfortunately, what a lot of people have done is they did not heed the warnings, right? They did, they were too fearful down the bottom here and waited and waited and waited, and they got really excited up in this area and they bought high, and they said, "Fine, that's okay because it's going to twenty thousand or going to a hundred thousand." So, you know, what's you know, what's the problem type of thing? But of course, again, they were positioned too, uh, you know, too heavy. And then when the market moved lower over a longer period of time, grinding lower and grinding lower, it was too much to bear. And they became too fearful and they sold out. And again, just more recently, people started climbing back in. Even after selling, I saw a lot of people say, well, I'm getting out right here. This is enough. I can't take this anymore, even though it was, you know, it was still up 120 odd percent from the from the bottom here. But again, they got out, and again they got back out in here because it moved 50 percent higher. So you see the pattern. If you're not disciplined with your investing and you focus too much on the greed, then you're susceptible to these massive price wings and to uh, to sentiment across the board. When everybody else apparently is making money, then you should be. You feel as if you should be making money and you're making the wrong decisions at the very wrong time. And I suspect a lot of people right now, today, are making the very wrong decision by getting out of this market and uh, going to be regretting this in the future. Now, I'm not saying this is gonna bounce right here. I'm not saying it's gonna rally tomorrow and not look back. But when you have the right allocation to Bitcoin, like I said, 10% of your, of your worth, you can afford to sit back and just wait it out and sit on the time frame that you intended to invest on. My time frame is a four year cycle, meaning I expect the top to occur around two and a half to three years from the lows, which means we're 15 months in, I don't expect the top to occur for another year to 15 months. That's my time frame. that's my horizon. As far as I'm concerned, I'm up 60% on an asset in just 15 months. And all I had to do was wait and be patient and wait it out. And when I saw these declines, I essentially said, well, again, I'm trading on a four-year time frame. I'm not trading on a daily time frame. I have a futures account and a separate trading account for that very reason. And I look at those trades differently because they are based on a different time frame. But for you on the four-year journey, your time frame is this longer period. And yes, we're down now. Now we have a new low that we have not seen since last year, since May of last year. So of course, that is not constructive, but it doesn't mean the cycle has failed. The cycle does not fail until we get below the four-year cycle low at that point. Clearly, way, way below where we are today. But when you look at the last four-year cycle as well, and you go 65 weeks out from the low, so in uh, 2015 timeframe, you go 65 weeks out, Bitcoin was sitting 120% above its lows. Right now it's sitting 80% above its lows, but just yesterday it was sitting something like, well, let's work it out. Just yesterday it was sitting at 160 three percent above its low okay and today it is still sitting 82 percent above its lows so we have to keep that into perspective and keep that in context also when you look back at the 2015 and 2016 time frame as it moved higher and higher over a month to month to month basis you see on the weekly chart and the daily chart some massive wicks lower some 30 to 40 percent wicks lower as well so there's a good possibility that 
in the 10 year time frame moving you know, looking at bitcoin's 10 year move its trend for example uh it's possible or it's actually likely as well that we could see this here being just one of those types of wicks on the weekly time frame okay that's the potential that's still out there and i don't plan on giving up on that potential because the market is down lower i had said also in previous videos that if you are too exposed or too leveraged to the point where you cannot handle a drawdown and a significant drawdown then reduce your position now or at that point because the market will force you to reduce that position purely out of fear of uh, capitulation or liquidation in your account as far as i'm concerned my belief in bitcoin and its narrative of a store of value um, uh, the understanding of where society in general is going from uh, you know, from an innovation standpoint, I still firmly believe in Bitcoin's role uh, as digital money in the future and the future society that we're going to be living in. And for that reason, I'm comfortable holding through this period. I'm comfortable holding through a lower decline as well, because again, my average price is low enough where I'm comfortable to do that. But I'm also comfortable, and I've said this before, in risking most of my allocation to Bitcoin over time. So even if for whatever reason, we no longer follow in this four year cycle, the trajectory that the market has shown us over the last 10 years. So if that nice big uh, linear move up has ended for whatever reason, I'm gonna be okay with that. That was not my primary expectation going in, but I still believe firmly that Bitcoin is gonna be heading up into the high, high market cap numbers, uh, well above where it stands today. I just don't know if that means we have to go through some more pain first to get there. That's always been a possibility, and it's one I'm willing to take a ride on if it does eventually go that far. Now, now we've seen panics in the markets many times before. I obviously traded through the 2008 period, and I was involved heavily with gold in that time, and gold, was supposedly you know the safe haven asset of the time but even in that extreme liquidity event gold fell by 30 or 35 percent in a bull market run and it did that for a month or two and it continued to go lower but then it sharply reversed and once it reversed it didn't look back and kept on going and doubled from that point and, and actually some more so i'm not here again to to sort of predict uh, otherwise, but uh, my belief here is that once this current liquidity event stabilizes, and I think it will stabilize soon, when I, mean, I look at the stock market and some of the other asset classes here, they have, I mean, they're as overbought, sorry, oversold, obviously, as, as much as we've probably seen, even, even compared to 2008 as well. There will come some stabilization in those markets. The, we will see global response from an economic standpoint we obviously are seeing central bank responses as well the liquidity aspect of that i don't think we have a uh, the same type of banking problem that we had in 2008 there will be stabilization and i believe that once the market stabilizes and the liquidity event subsides we will see a recovery in bitcoin's price and i think that could be uh, with coupled with the extreme policy response that we see from a fiscal standpoint and also from a monetary standpoint, I believe the amount of liquidity that's going to be flushed into this, uh, this world economy, the amount of money printing that's going to be put into this world economy is eventually going to help the Bitcoin narrative. And some of that's going to flow into Bitcoin and some of it will become uh, sort of a flight to safety as well, again, once that liquidity event subsides. So kind of to sum up here, all I can really say to you is you need to look at this from a long-term perspective. You need to have the right science. I've been saying this in every single video. You need to be able to sleep at night and you need to not feel the urge or the need to check on price every single minute, especially in an environment like this. And it certainly should not be creating stress. If these big moves higher, like we saw here and here, create far too much excitement for you and if these big declines lower create way too much fear and stress then that is 
clearly the definition of what a over leveraged oversized position is get yourself a small and comfortable allocation especially now with price down in this area and commit to the long term and be happy with what the market gives us and if that means that we have to suffer through a deeper drawdown or a more of a sideways you know, accumulation phase over the next two months or six months or eight months then so be it that's what it will have to be there is no there are no free runs or fr free rides in the investment world never is never will be and bitcoin is certainly no exception just because it's done you know what it has done in the past in a certain style in a certain pattern it doesn't mean it needs to repeat itself right here how it gets to that point higher uh, is really anybody's guess in the end and i guess really in hindsight uh, hindsight now looking at that this big move here was kind of the first clue that we weren't going to get the same type of nice arcing move higher from one low to one high in a four-year cycle like we saw in previous cycles. If this move here has already fooled already fooled way too many people. This one did as well. This, this third one up has done as well. And clearly this fourth one here has taken the majority of people by surprise. This is not a normal looking, when I say normal, it is normal, it's a market, right? It's price action, but it's not uh, anything like prior cycles. So we need to stop thinking and comparing to prior cycles. We just need to look at the longer term potential, the longer term trend, and uh, formulate the investment strategy and narrative around that long-term trend and the long-term uh, you know, belief and fundamentals that, uh, that we feel Bitcoin have today. And lastly, with that said, let this be an investment lesson for you. This is not hopefully the last time that you will be investing, uh, whether it's Bitcoin, any other crypto asset or any asset class in general. Think about the journey so far. Think about some of the decisions you've made, when you've made those decisions, what price was doing at the time you made those decisions, what you were thinking, what your emotional state was like, what your expectations were like, and learn from that process. Learn from what you did at certain times, whether it was down in this area, whether it was up in here or here or here. Learn from what you were doing. If you did it all correctly, then kudos to you. But uh, we always can learn. We can always improve. And you know, let this be a lesson for you. Even if the experience at the end is not what you thought it was going to be, hopefully it's going to be more than what you thought it was going to be. But in the end, learn from this because this won't be your first. And it's, sorry, this won't be your last. And uh, hopefully uh, you have plenty more and many more successful opportunities to come. But stick with this. Don't give up hope at this point. Not after a decline of this nature right here. Again, think of why you're involved, why you got in, and if it was purely for the money and purely for the greed, then rethink that and resize, reallocate, and come back with a different mindset. Thanks very much for listening. All the best, and speak to you soon.